For me, the first time you pick up and use alcohol or drugs, the results can be catastrophic. In my career, I amassed $100 million. When my fall, when my rock bottom happened, out of the NBA, out of the league, with no money. I'm Kevin Atlas, and I'm bringing some of the most successful, most inspirational human beings on this planet into your classrooms. They beat the odds, they overcame adversity, and through that, they found a way to believe. I've partnered with Varsity Brands to provide the answers, the blueprints. I have this heart that bleeds for the youth of this country, so I fight as a soldier for change, and I want us all to learn to lead, and not just to elevate ourselves, to elevate each other. I'm looking for students nationwide to take action from what they learn from this series. This is how the world changes. It starts with you. We have a special guest today who had quite a bit of success on the Milwaukee Bucks coaching staff this year. After just one season as an assistant, his head coach, Mike Budenhauser, won Coach of the Year. As a skill coach, he helped lead Giannis the Greek freak, Ante Tacumpo, to become MVP of the NBA. Let me introduce you to Vin Baker, a man who unfortunately became more notorious for his downfall than his successes. I sat down with him to hear his story about redemption. I was cut as a freshman. In ninth grade, I didn't make the varsity or JV. As a sophomore, I just played JV. I was a little bit uncoordinated. My passion was there, but my game just hadn't come yet. And then when my, my height and game met my overcoming not making the team, it was showtime. After playing one year of high school, I wasn't exactly recruited by a ton of schools, but the University of Hartford offered me a scholarship. So. I took that first year of, at the University of Hartford, and I won't say it was a disappointing season, but it wasn't what I wanted out of my freshman year. So I averaged four points a game uh, my freshman year, and I went into the summer and I, I vowed to get better. I worked on my weights, I got stronger, and spent about three to four hours a day working on my game. When I became a sophomore, and I started averaging 20 points a game, it really hit me in my mind, like there's nothing I can't do. So Vin continued to work. He put in endless hours, improving his game more and more. By the time he hit his last two years of college basketball, Sports Illustrated named him the nation's best kept secret. Only after that article, he was anything but. College goes by so fast and until like the next night, it felt like I was sitting in Detroit at the palace with my parents, with my agent, with my friends, wondering what's, who's gonna draft me. With the eighth pick in the 1993 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Vin Baker. I'll never forget it, you know, hearing my name announced, uh, not knowing that it was gonna be announced. It was just a magical, special moment, one that I'll always cherish. All the hard work, all the dedication, all the overcoming, all the belief, it's here, it happened. I was somewhat overwhelmed by a lot of the transition from college uh, to the NBA. The hardest adjustment for me was adjusting to the lifestyle of the NBA. I'd gone from a $20 budget in college a week to a $50,000 budget in a month. It's gonna sound crazy, but I, I think I bought like a, an alligator. Like I was <laughs> making this up. Although now a multimillionaire, he had no idea the true cost of what was to come. But then, you know, the money keeps coming. My first contract was $18 million. The success keeps coming. In, in my first five years in the NBA, I was a four-time NBA All-Star. So I went from the nation's best kept secret to now one of the top 25 players in the world. I think at some point, what I grew up on in the church, my faith, my work ethic, it changed because I had made it. It led me down to a dark path. When I started to drink and started to party and started to hang out, you know, it went from, you know, doing it on the weekends, 
every other weekend, every other night, to at some point I didn't realize that I needed to do it every night. It came to a point that I couldn't control my body. In that world in particular, it's basketball, it's traveling, it's nights, it's parties. And um, before I knew it, um, I was dependent. You know, I had to drink. I didn't realize that, you know, I had crossed over into a really dark place of, you know, this is no longer recreational drinking. This is something that my body absolutely needs to function. I had become an alcoholic in the midst of my prime. Can you imagine being on the top of the world, yet never in a darker place? The difficult part for me was not only getting to that space, but being an all-star, who do you tell that I'm in trouble? Like I've succumbed to something that's in some ways embarrassing. This basketball thing that I had been worked so hard to become known for in the short period of time, I'm about to be infamous for my addiction to alcohol. It's not a matter of wins and losses. It's not a matter of winning a championship. It's not a matter of winning an Olympic gold medal. It's not a matter of being an all-star. This is a matter of life and death. It's terrifying in the fact that this money, this fame that I had amassed couldn't save me from the fact that I'm an alcoholic. If you keep going the way you're going, then all that stuff will not matter because you will either be dead in jail or rock bottom is where I went. Vin began to lose everything, beginning with his fortune. For me, it wasn't the losing of money, but I physically was starting to notice the deterioration in my body. I literally looked into the mirror and was like, whoa, I felt like my spirit to overcome. I felt like my spirit to believe. I felt like my spirit to win was gone. At that moment, I just was like, I, I got to turn this around. Like, I've got to change. My mind is made up that I am done. And I checked myself into a facility, and with my last bit of energy, my last bit of faith, my last bit of belief, I just asked for God's redemptive power. It doesn't matter if you're an NBA star like Vin Baker or a blue collar worker. We're all capable of slipping and falling in our lives. What's important is how you pick yourself back up. It's not even about what I can recover. I just want to recover my life. I believed in all the stuff that got me to be a pro. I believed in the stuff that got me to be the nation's best kept secret. I believed in the stuff that got me to be, it was in me still. I just had to dig down, get the alcohol away, get the drugs away. I had to dig down and find that person again and I was able to do it. You know, the worst thing you could do is keep this a secret. The best thing you can do is to ask for help. My former boss with the Seattle Supersonics, my owner is Howard Schultz, um, former CEO of, of um, Starbucks. And I called him like a year, maybe nine months into my sobriety. And we had a conversation and he said, what about retail? I'm like, absolutely, I'd love to own a store. <laughs> and that wasn't what we came up with. The, the plan was to actually go and serve talls and grandes and ventis and frappuccinos and cappuccinos. I was the tallest barista ever, but it was such a great point in my life because it allowed me to stay humble, even though I was facing a little bit of embarrassment for everyone knowing the story, it allowed me to grow. Vin swallowed his pride and did what he had to in order to put the pieces of his life back together. And he did. And that hard work and rededication paid off as he returned home to Milwaukee and to the team that drafted him, now working as part of one of their coaching staff. I came full circle after getting sober uh, and turning my life around, sobriety first, perspective, humility. Amazingly enough, I'm back where I started. So I didn't really take off in basketball until I was a junior in high school. Sobriety next year. You start living when you find out the purpose is bigger than you. Yeah, right? that's the truth. Yeah, 100%. It really is. That's what it is. Yeah. Now, I didn't make my seventh grade basketball team. I was 6'4". Really? Yeah. Wow. He said it was a two-arm sport. Try something else. So I started playing basketball in the eighth grade. Wow. Yeah. 
Eighth grade? Yeah, basketball's always been like the dirtiest journey for me, man. Yeah. It's a tough one. Yeah. But it, uh, it led me to a greater path, I think, so. That's right. Oh, man, that would have been good to make. Wow. Ah. I'm impressed. I cannot dunk. I'm gonna try one, Kev. You won't. I'm gonna try one. <laughs> Ah! Was it the same? No. Still got it. Still got it. Vin screwed up. He made mistakes, and he paid for them dearly. But he did what he had to in order to get his life back on track. And I think we can all learn from that. That no matter how hard things get, no matter how much life knocks us down, there's always a way to get back up. But it requires perseverance, commitment, and a belief in yourself that you can do this. I believe in you. Humility is not easy to keep, especially when you're granted these different accolades and people say you're the greatest. Because at some point, there's gonna be somebody greater than you, someone better than you. And it's gonna take that humility to overcome that player. It's gonna take that humility to overcome that game, that conference, that championship. You must stay humble in order to take it to the next level. And, and if you don't have the humility, again, it's not a matter of if the fall will happen, it's a matter of when it will happen. So stay humble, it's the most important attribute you can have to remain true to yourself.